So yes, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I see by the fabulous clock on my Continental M7 that it's one o'clock. So I will actually get started because I got lots of information to share as always. And I don't want to keep you all uh, too, too late. So yes, my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomic Canada. So thank you very much for joining me today as we're continuing our look at um, some hemming alternatives, some hemming feet. Uh, Amanda was on uh, Tuesday, if you joined us at Genomi Canada Instagram Live, uh, Amanda did the rolled hem foot, the D foot, and some optional feet, D1 and D2, which are different sizes. Now, if you tune in uh, to the live late or you miss it, you can go back and watch that at the um, Instagram TV, the IGTV. It's a little TV with antenna icon that's on the main Genomi Canada page. And as well, a day or two after the lives, uh, they will be posted as YouTube videos on the Genomi Life YouTube channel. So you can go back to review them there as well. So today I'm going to talk about the fabulous, oh, I'm going to start with the G foot. Oh my, um, can you just hang up that phone, please? <laughs> I'm down in my sewing room and I didn't realize my business line was going to be. If just hang up, please. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Again, you never know about live. <laughs> so yes, the G foot is our blind hem foot. And it comes with a number of our machines. But then you can also get it in a separate blister pack from your dealer. It's available in nine millimeter, seven millimeter, and there's even an adjustable five millimeter version. So can you all see that? Should I move it maybe better here? Oh, I know. Sorry. Is that the autofocus? <laughs> yes. No, I moved too soon. Move oh, I see. Okay. Is that better? Can you see that? Okay. Okay, fantastic. Yes, thank you. Okay, so this is the G foot. It comes again with a number of our machine or available again in a separate blister pack from your dealer. And what's special about it, it's got this long groove, this guide down the center. I call it a rudder. It reminds me of something you'd find on a boat. Now, don't confuse it with our S foot our stitch in the ditch foot. It looks very similar and the stitch in the ditch foot has this really big guide running down the middle. But what is really different about the two, I hope you can see, the S foot here is, again, they're nine millimeters for my machine. The S foot has nothing in this groove of where the needle plate is. Um, but on the G foot, we have this little blip here in the guide and this is what makes the G foot so special and why we want to use it for our blind hem because of that little blip there in the guide it is going to help us make beautiful stitches uh, they give the stitches a little bit of slack as they're coming over to take a bite out of that fabric to do the blind hem so having that little blip there is important so your stitches look good so, and it's very cool having the guide. You know, I love all these feet with um, the guides. It certainly makes our jobs much easier. So the blind hem foot, it's been around for years and years, and it is a great stitch to use. Think of curtains, especially hemming yards and yards and yards of curtains. Uh, but again, hemming garments as well, very quickly and easily. So on the front side of your garment or on your fabric, you really don't see any stitches. On the back side, I hope you can see my yellow uh, orangey stitches. There's uh, straight stitches and then there's a bite and then there's straight stitch and then there's a little zigzag bite into the fabric. So that's the, the magic of the blind hem. It really is like an invisible hem. Now, how you fold your fabric is essential to how you make your blind hem. You actually fold it back on itself and create this other little fold here. So as you stitch your blind hem, it's going to look like this. So it stitches a couple of stitches and then takes a bite into the, that fold of the fabric and a couple more stitches and another little bite. So the depth of that bite is what um, dictates, I guess, whether or not your stitches show on the right hand side. 
and I'll talk more about that later. So this sample, now typically, again, you really don't want to see your thread on the right side, but if this thread were matching to my fabric, I really wouldn't see it at all. It would be perfectly fine. Or maybe in this case, you want it to show, like this could be, the, to me, this looks like almost like a hand-picked stitch that this could be a decorative element to uh, hem, let's say. So maybe you want it to show. So there's lots of versatility to this hem. Now this is, now it works on a lot of fabrics, uh, mainly medium to uh, heavier fabrics. Uh, this is, I would say, like an upholstery weight fabric, but still, it, it, um, you know, can move. Uh, I think this would be a great skirt or a fitted blazer. You can't see any stitches on either side. If it's a more textured fabric or certainly with a print, you really don't see any stitching at all. And again, that's how I would create my blind hem in the machine where it stitches down and takes a little bite into that fold. Now this raw edge of the hem, it could be done, I've used the wave blade with the serger, uh, or sorry, with the rotary cutter, I use the wave blade uh, on the rotary cutter, or I could use pinking shears, or then yes, I could take it to the serger and finish that off, or I could use one of the over edge, over cast feet that I'm going to talk about in just a minute to finish that raw edge if I needed to. Uh, now we can also do a blind hem on that. So those were woven fabrics. We can do a blind hem on knit fabrics. So you don't see any stitching. You just see a little dimple there of where my needle picked up literally like one or two threads of the fabric. And there is an option for knits with the blind hem. So it's got built-in stretch. So I don't have to worry about any stitches popping. And then again, maybe you can see my line of stitches here, but instead of straight stitch, it's like a little zigzag and a couple of little zigzags, and then it bites into the fold, and then a couple of other little zigzags and then bites into the fold. So that's what creates that built-in stretch. On knit fabrics, I don't need to worry about the, the raw edge, uh, you know, unraveling, so I really don't need to finish that edge at all. Uh, but again, I could finish that on the serger or using the overcast or over edge uh, feet that I'm we'll talk about. Now on this polar fleece, this worked out so beautifully. Like I can't see any stitching there at all. Again, the more textured the fabric is, uh, the more those stitches just sink right in and you don't see them at all. So maybe you can see on the wrong side here of has I stitch in and then again, a little bite, stitch and then bite. And I can adjust the, the length in between those bites as well. And again, it's got that built-in stretch with that little zigzag, so I don't have to worry about anything popping. Now, in this sample is uh, like a trico knit would be great for a, a slip or a camisole. Now, I can see my stitches there in the yellow, but again, if I use more of a tan or creamy colored thread, even a gold thread, um, I really wouldn't see those at all. That would not be objectionable at all. Now over here, oh, I don't see any stitches at all, which is most preferred. But as I discovered later, the reason why I don't see any stitches is, oh, I missed catching that fold of the fabric. I didn't take enough bite into the fabric, so it, it didn't catch. Now with a, a situation like this, I've missed a couple of those little bites. So if I miss one or two, I may just even leave it and not even worry about it. Or I could go back, you know, fold my fabric the way it was, and I could go back to stitch to try to catch that fold again to repair that. Uh, I could um, thread up a hand sewing needle and just do a little tack there of a stitch or two or you know uh, many times uh, if i've missed this i would just stick in a little piece of fusible web and hit it with the iron and nobody would ever know <laughs> that i missed a couple of stitches there so there uh, the blind hem stitch is a really forgiving stitch on how you can correct it now in this case uh, as well i folded up my hem as usual but i folded back this fold a little uh, more narrow so then I didn't have to have my lineup of stitching way over here at the edge, this line of stitching. You know, I didn't have to stitch it way over here. I could um, make a, a more shallow fold over here so the line of stitching is further away from this raw edge. And then I can go back and cut that 
off a little closer to my hem. So I don't have to worry about being, you know, right at the edge of that fabric. And, you know, sometimes the machines like to, to eat it. <laughs> so, uh, but holding onto your threads always helps uh, prevent that from happening. So again, lots of versatility with this blind hem. So I have it on the machine. If you want to maybe move the camera so everybody can see. So this is the advantage of the blind hem is having that um, guide down the center here. And I'm going to put my fabric down on the bed of the uh, machine. My right side of my fabric is down to the bed of the machine. I've already at the iron previously folded up my hem, whatever hem allowance I want or whatever my pattern dictates. And I'm gonna pinch just where that hem is on each side of my fabric here, each end of my fabric. And I'm just gonna tuck under that hem edge. So then again, when I look uh, at the, the other side of my fabric, the, the right side of the fabric is down at the bed of the machine. And then the wrong side of the fabric is facing up to me. And then there is that fold that we created. And this fold, I want to keep right along where that black groove is down the center of the foot. And as I do the blind hem stitch, it's going to stitch down on this hem edge, and then it's going to take a little bite into the fold of that fabric. Now, if you follow me up here to the machine, a number of our Janome machines will be able to do the blind hem stitch. So always consult your manual on which stitch to use and how to make any adjustments um, in your machine. But uh, basically, they, they'll be in utility stitches are these blind hems here. That is my straight stitch one that it stitches straight in between uh, stitches straight in between those notches, in between those bites, or then that one is my zigzag one uh, for my knits. So there it's got the little zigzags and then the big bite. So on your machine, if it's not the fabulous Janome Continental M7, uh, again, you may find your blind hem stitches in the utility section of your machine, or as you scan across the front face of your machine, they'll look like that. Now, in a number of our machines, though, uh, we've got the t-shirt application, the sewing applications menu. So I can also find my blind hem that way by hitting that little t-shirt. And the sewing applications is basically the machine asking us, well, what do you want to do? So in this case, oh, I want to do a blind hem. <laughs> so I click on that. And then again, I've got a woven option and I've got a stretch knit option. So the wonderful thing about sewing applications is the machine is already set up um, for the optimum um, settings of stitch width and length and everything. But you can always go into your adjustment menu and start adjusting the width and the length. Uh, and again, more information on how to do all these adjustments will be in your manual. But basically, I can adjust the bite of that little zigzag that comes into my fabric. I can increase that bite or I can decrease that bite. Again, depending on your machine, I can move this whole line of stitching closer to if this were my raw edge, or I can move it closer to the fold by hitting this adjustment here. So again, you see how the tip of the bite stayed where it was, but then that whole line of stitching moved closer to the raw edge, making a deeper bite. This would be good if you've got a thicker fabric, more lofty fabric, or maybe I have really fine fabric like that um, Trico uh, slip. So then I want to turn it really uh, low and close to that fold of the fabric. So it's a really small bite. And then I could come back here and trim off my um, hem allowance closer to that line of stitching if I wanted. And again, maybe I want to do a longer let me hit that back to default. Maybe I want to do a, a longer stitch. So instead of having just um, two millimeters in between my zigzag, I can turn it all the way up 
And now I don't want to uh, increase the distance in between those two bites too much. If this were a hem on um, a pair of pants, for example, you know, when you stick your foot in the hem, you don't want to catch it and, and take down that hem. So uh, be careful of how far you space these bites into the fabric. But uh, again, on, a, on curtains or something, that would be totally fine. And another thing I love about our machines is when I start making all these adjustments, I don't need to worry about uh, what they were set at initially. I can just hit default and it takes it right back. So that's really wonderful. Less for me to worry about. <laughs> So I'm just going to go and do this little sample here. So again, I've got my fabric folded. So the fold is going to line up with that uh, guide down the center. And always when you do anything, any new technique, any new foot, any new fabric, you're going to do lots of tests and experiment what works best. But it's really easy, really fast to do. And then, oh, again, you may not be able to see with this uh, line of stitching on the fabric there, but as I flip it over, I always like to do, when I do my test, I use a different color in the bobbin than I do the needle, so I can really tell which thread is which. So that's my bobbin thread. I can really see it. Uh, I don't see my needle thread as much because I really don't want to see that blind hem stitch. I see tiny bit. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. I do see a tiny little bit, but again, that's perfectly acceptable. And if my thread were a little bit darker, you wouldn't see it at all. That would be beautiful. So it's a really fun, easy technique to do. Uh, we've written many blogs on the Janome Life blog, so you can go back to review those on the blind hem foot. Uh, and very quickly, another reason I love this foot so much is I love using it for edge stitching. So edge stitching, especially if you're a garment sewer, to me this was wonderful. Uh, edge stitching is stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So on um, this t or this uh, dress shirt, for example, I wrote a blog post called uh, Shirt Making Details, and I talked about using the G foot for edge stitching. So it's again about an eighth of an inch away, uh, all on the shoulder seam, the arm seam, even the underarm seed and the side seam, I edge stitch everything and it really makes the garment uh, wear better, um, less ironing, it keeps all the seam allowances nice and neat. And using the G foot is so easy because I can go back to my regular utility stitch, just regular straight stitch, and I can move my needle over. I want to move it to the left of that guide. Now, I, it's just a personal preference, but I like doing it at 1.0. So instead of my regular uh, 4.5 center needle position, I've moved my needle over to the left uh, that it's 1.0. So it's to the left of that guide. So as you make the adjustments of your needle, again, you need to pay attention to you need to pay attention to that little blip, <laughs> that little guide in the foot. So I want my needle to be on the left side of that little blip when I do my edge stitching. So I've got my seam already pressed. I did a quarter of inch seam. It's already pressed to one side. And then now I can just run that guide along my seam, basically in my seam allowance the well of the seam there and then I'm stitching again about a, a eighth of an inch away. So it's a really fast, easy way to do perfectly even edge stitching. So that is the G foot, the blind hem foot. And now I'm going to talk about the, whoops, we'll get rid of that. Now I'm going to talk about the M foot, which is a foot that also comes with a number of our machines. It is the overcast foot, depending on which manual you have. Sometimes Janome refers this as the overcast foot. Other times they call it the over edge foot. And there is another foot which looks very similar. That is the C foot. Now the M foot here, I call it the over edge or overcast. They're kind of one and the same. Uh, the M foot is uh, for nine millimeter machines and seven millimeter machines. And again, you can always check with your Genome dealer to make sure you get the correct 
uh, foot for the correct machine. The C foot um, is for seven millimeter machines and five millimeter machines. And they are very similar. They've got these little skinny uh, metal prongs, these little uh, fingers, but then the C foot has a little brush on the side and the M foot has another little wire off to the side. So it's got three wires, uh, whereas the C foot has two wires. Uh, but they work, again, very uh, similarly in that it replicates a serger stitch. And I took a picture here on my iPad, which I don't know if you'll be able to see. It may be a little too dark or with the glare may not be so great. But there are the metal little stitch fingers of my serger. This is the AT2000D, but any serger will have these. These little metal fingers that are on your serger. And this is what, again, supports the stitches as it goes back and forth, creating that um, overcast, that over edge, that overlock stitch uh, to finish off the raw edges of your fabric so they don't ravel. So our M foot and the C foot, again, have those same little metal wires that will support the stitches. This will do, again, basically the same as your serger, except it will not cut your fabric. That's the only thing. But it will do the same as finishing the raw edge. So I've got some examples here. Now, again, depending on your machine, so always consult your instruction manual of what kind of stitches you have available. But on these over edge seam, I've stitched my regular seam, like five eighths of an inch, and then I put the two layers, then they were together, and then I use that over edge foot or over cast foot. And then on the wrong side, maybe you can see it's pulled the uh, needle thread just a little bit to the back. So it's completely um, encased that or surrounded that raw edge. Now on this sample, this is um, over edge number two. This is the actual like overcast stitch that totally uh, mimics a serger. So it does a line of stitching and then it um, does this almost like a zigzag over to the edge of the fabric. And then there is another uh, line of stitching right along the raw edge of the fabric. I hope you can see that which is exactly what your serger does. This would be done by the loopers of the serger. And instead on your machine, it's you know a zigzag using the needle and the bobbin, but uh, there is another line of stitching right down the edge of that raw edge. So there's gonna be no raveling there at all. So again, it does the same as a serger uh, or certainly very close. It just does not cut the edge of the fabric. So this is great to use. There's even like a, a double version of it. Um, if your fabric's really ravelly, like some of these uh, sheer fabrics can be really ravelly. So there's like a double more secure uh, finish or then as well use it for heavy fabrics like jeans that totally looks like a serge stitch to me that's beautiful and I don't have to worry about any raveling or again it's also great for knits there is a built-in stretch to the knit uh, over edge overcast stitching there so I don't have to worry about any stitches popping they lay perfectly flat so depending on your machine uh, and depending on how many options of stitches you have available uh, again always consult your manual but of your stitches again they're probably in the utility section any of these you may have on your machine this one in particular is great for knits and then there is the heavy version where it's got like that extra row of little zigzags in to stop the excess raveling. So they may be again in the utility section of your machine or because here on the Continental M7 I've got my sewing applications, I can go to that. And then I've got three different options here of a over edge woven, over edge stretch knit and over edge heavy. So I'm going to select just over edge woven. And then amongst these, I've got some options. So depending on what you want to do, um, this two layers number two is our overcast stitch. It's got the row of stitching here. So I don't need it just to finish the edges of my fabric. I can seam my 
garment together or whatever my project is, I can seam because there's a row of stitching here, then it does the zigzag, and then there's that other row of stitching that goes right along the raw edge of the fabric. So that's the overcasting stitch. And when you look at my sample here, even if I tug on it, it like you can't see, oh, how did I finish the seam allowance? You, you would have no clue how I finished the seam allowance there. When I turn it over, I see, oh, I seamed these two layers of fabric together while I was doing that over edge stitch. So it worked out beautifully. And then you've got options depending on how your, in this case, your garment, how it's going to be constructed. You could finish each uh, piece, your front and your back, let's say, uh, off separately. So I could finish that edge separately and then put them together and do my five eighths of an inch. And then you could press them flat. Or you could do that five eighths of an inch seam first and then just fold it back. And then I would do this over edge or the overcast stitch down each edge. So it's your personal preference. I will just do, I'll seam it. Oh. To know, should the fabric roll over on woven fabrics or is that dependent on how you align against the fabric edge? That's an excellent question. And that leads me right up to, it depends on how you line it up. Um, it If it rolls, it was ever so slight, but it really shouldn't roll very much at all because of the the way that these feet are engineered. I love how Janome engineers these feet so well. Of my M foot, there's a little guide here, a little black guide. So I'm gonna line my raw edge of my fabric up with that guide. And then I don't know if you will be able to get the camera kind of down and see that when I drop my foot down, it is, just a little beyond that wire, that uh, right wire, <laughs> I guess. So yes, how you align, it really should be in, in line with that black uh, guide. And uh, Amanda wrote a great uh, blog post on Janome Life uh, recently. You can always use the search box of Janome Life and type in um, over edge foot, for example. Um, and then um, Amanda's blog post uh, using this foot comes up. Uh, but yeah, so then by having that lined up my and by having my uh, machine all set up for this uh, over edge stitch is great because then I know when I start sewing, my needle is not going to hit those bars at all. So I can slow down my machine so you can see. So I'm doing the over cast stitch. So here it's doing my... I'll come back over here. So here, this is the overcast stitch. It's gonna do this uh, line of stitching along the left side. So that's actually seaming it together. Then it's gonna do a little zigzag over the raw edge of the fabric. And it's gonna start chain stitching off the raw edge of my fabric. And it's going over on the M foot, it's going over that third wire. If I were using the C foot with the little brush, then this uh, outer stitch of the right would go over that little brush. So I hope that all makes sense. Again, this is why you consult your instruction manual, um, but it really works well. So by having those little uh, wires there, then it keeps your fabric flat. So it's not gonna roll up at all. If you need to, you could always go back in and adjust your needle tension to not pull as tight. But I found so far, I really haven't had to do that. The foot uh, keeps everything flat and keeps everything in shape. And then of course, as I iron it, it looks even better, but it's like, that's beautiful. Now, a quick tip too, as I took this away from the machine, as you're doing your line of stitching and you come to the end of your seam, make sure then you pull your fabric away from you straight back. You don't want to immediately finish your seam and pull it off to the left. And the reason being is because of those wires of the foot, you want to pull to the back. So it 
uh, comes off those wires, just like you do on the serger. It comes off those wires and then you can cut your threads and pull it off to the, to the left. So make sure you pull it back first straight and then cut your threads and pull it off to the left. So it's a really good foot. Any questions? I know that's a lot of information really quickly. <laughs> No, okay, so fantastic. If you make any adjustments, you have to make sure the needle doesn't hit. Any Absolutely. Now, again, I'm fortunate. This is what I love about sewing applications. Uh, the, the All of that guesswork has already been done for us. So we know exactly that the needle is not going to hit those little wires. If you were to manually adjust this and, and use a, a different stitch, then yes, you would really walk it with your um, turning the, the flywheel first to, to really walk the needle exactly where it's going to hit because you do not want to hit your needle on those little wires. So when you use the feet as they're, they're intended, um, it's amazing. Again, you can achieve such wonderful professional results very quickly and easily using your variety of Janome feet. That's one reason why I love Janome. <laughs> I think that's why, that's why a lot of you love Janome too. So if there's no other questions or concerns, I will let you all go off and enjoy your beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching. And again, this will be on the Janome Life YouTube channel in a couple of days, or you can go back to review this if you tuned in late at the IGTV little icon on the Janome Canada main page. And I will see you all hopefully tomorrow at Janome HQ at 1 p.m. as I'm going to be talking about the beading foot, the L feet. So I will see you then. Thank you so much then. Bye.